Okay, so uh, last day we have discussed about uh, common gate amplifier from a different perspective. We have drawn the uh, corresponding amplifier circuit and uh, we have uh, developed the corresponding small signal model of that. Okay, now today we will observe the common gate amplifier from a different perspective from the basis perspective. Okay, so let me once again uh, draw the uh, small thing, I mean the circuit diagram for a common gate amplifier. So, as you understand that for a common gate amplifier, uh, the input is applied at the source and uh, yeah, input is applied at the source and the output is obtained from the drain end. So, suppose is the supply VDD. And the input is, I mean, the gate is applied with a voltage GB for the biasing. And uh, we are applying the input at this particular terminal, that is V in, and the output is obtained from the drain terminal. Okay. And you have noticed the expression for the corresponding voltage gate was uh, GM times RT. Simply speaking, GM times RT if uh, the drain resistance is given by RT. Now, typically what happens, uh, as I also mentioned last day, so under DC condition, I have to uh, ensure that, okay, this voltage, get to source voltage is greater than the threshold voltage so that the device is on. And under DC condition, you should have some DC current flowing through the device, right? Now, there could have been some input signal, uh, rather some input source uh, for which, uh, which cannot carry this input uh, DC current. For example, if I consider some V shaped antenna which contains uh, no DC current. So, in that case, you have to provide some other path for the DC current to flow. So, what I can do uh, instead of having this one, I mean, the biasing should be modified to some extent, something like this. So, suppose there is a current source biasing over there and the input is coupled through a capacitor. So, this is your input signal V in. Okay, some capacitor have connected over there, some C. Now, forget about the capacitor for the time being. Now, first of all, you have to understand how does this particular circuit operate when I am allowing the uh, corresponding input to vary from 0 to VDD. Suppose VDD is your supply voltage. Right, and I have to assume that uh, this VB is uh, such that the device remains in the uh, saturation region. When, the, when I am uh, trying to use this particular amplifier, uh, this particular device as an amplifier. Right. Now, first of all, in order to identify that, okay, the device is operating in the on state. What you need to ensure? What is the condition that the device remains in the on state? We say M MOS. So VGS get to source voltage should be greater than the threshold voltage, right? So what is the get to source voltage over here? VB is a constant voltage, DC supply, VB. So VB minus V in. So, Vb minus V in, this should be greater than or equal to the threshold voltage. So, that condition has to be established first, right? Or in other words, what I can say that V in is less than or equal to Vb minus Vth. That is the condition so that the device is on. If this condition is true, that means the device is on. That means if V in is less than or equal to V minus VTH, then the device is on. Now, the next question is that had this been the case, suppose V in is just less than V minus VTH, or rather, if you consider V in is just greater than V minus VTH, then the device should be off. 
Now if the reverse is out, i is equal to 0, right? What about v out then? V d t. Okay. So v out is equal to v d t then, and uh, your gate voltage is equal to v b. So when the device is off, when the device is off, under off condition, under off condition, what I have? V d is equal to V d d and your V g is equal to V b. Typically V b is smaller than V d. Okay. Then what is the status of the uh, MOS device under off condition? The drain voltage is typically large as compared to the gate voltage. Now this happens when your input voltage is greater than the V minus V t. Right? And now I am allowing the input to vary. The large analysis I am trying to carry out today. So input is varying from 0 to VD or from VD to 0. So as input is greater than V minus VTH, device is off. Drain voltage is held at VD, gate voltage is held at VB, and when the input voltage is just less than this V minus VTH, then what is the status of for your uh, drain voltage? Slightly less than VDD. Because now we have some current flowing through this. Slightly less than VDD. Gate is held at VB. Okay. Now, what do you expect? In which region the device is uh, operating now? Device is on because V in is now less than V minus VTH. The so device is on, but in which region? Saturation? Or, or your uh, trial region? Trial saturation. saturation? Saturation. Why saturation? VD is... VD is yeah, VD is larger. VD is held at VDD, some, somewhat less than VDD. That, that's, that's large. And VG is held at VB. So device will remain in saturation as long as... What is the condition? VD, VB minus VG. So what is the condition? VDS or VD should be greater than VG minus VTH. If it is greater than VG minus VTH, that means device will remain in the saturation region. Okay. So then, what will be the expression for the uh, current? The drain current ID. What is ID then? If the device is in the saturation region, what is ID? Half mu of N C ox W over L and then what is VGS? What is VGS? VB minus V in minus VTH whole square. Forget out uh, this uh, channel and modulation for the time being. So ID is equal to half mu and C of W over L VB minus V in minus VTH whole square. Okay? And what is the expression for your V out then? This V out is nothing but VDD minus this ID times RD half mu and C ox W over L V B minus V in minus V T H whole square R T. Okay? Why saturation? Okay. Just consider the device is just off now. That means V in is just greater than V minus V T H. Right? Greater than. Because if V in is or if this condition is true, Sorry, if this condition is true, this one, if this condition is true, that means the device is on, get to source voltage greater than threshold voltage. What is get to source? Vb minus V. If it is greater than threshold voltage, then the device is on. Which means that V in should be less than V minus VTH. So when can we expect device will be off? If V in is greater than V minus VTH, then Device is off. Device off means what? The drain voltage is held at VDD. Gate voltage is always held at VB, some constant voltage. But the device is off or off. It's always maintained at VB. Now suppose your input voltage, now you are allowing the input to be less than this. That means you are allowing the input to vary from VDD to 0. Not from 0 to VDD, rather VDD to 0. So as long as it is higher than this one, uh, VB minus VTH, device is off. Now, when the value of V in is just less than that, 
device will be on. I don't know in which region, but device will be on. Right? Then what about your drain potential? <coughs> Somewhat less than VDT because your uh, what is your drain potential? This is nothing but VDT minus some current uh, flowing through this RT, so this drop across this resistance, VDT minus IDRT. So some non-zero ID will be there when the device is on. Now let's assume that the that the voltage is just less than uh, somewhat less than the VDD. And assume that VDD is sufficiently large than VP. Suppose VDD is equal to 3 volt and VP is equal to 1 volt, for example, or 1.5 volt. So when it just uh, I mean crosses this uh, particular threshold, then VD is held at a higher value as compared to VG. Right? So what is the condition for saturation? Condition is that if VD is greater than VG minus VTH, then the device will remain in saturation. For of the source terminal, if VD is greater than the gate minus threshold, right? Now here you find that VD itself is greater than gate, right? So obviously it, is, it should be greater than the gate minus threshold. So device will be in the saturation. Clear now? Yes, you have some current. Current. What is your uh, VD then? This VD, this value of VD is nothing but VDD minus IDRT. Now when the device is on, there will be some current flowing through this. Right? So that current, you just consider VB is just less than V minus VT. That means it's equal to VB minus VTH minus some delta V. Just less than that. For example, your V minus VTH, say let's take some numerical value. Let's take VB is equal to say 1.5 volt. And your VTH, suppose this is equal to say 0 0.5 volt. Okay. And let's assume that VDD is equal to 3 volt. Okay, so I'm changing V in from say 3 volt to 0. That is the excursion from 3 volt to 0. So when it is greater than 1 volt, as long as V in is greater than 1 volt, greater than 1 volt, because this is held at 1.5, this, this is greater than 1 volt. So that difference from here to here, that difference should be at least 0 0.5. This side positive, this side negative. Then the device will be on. If, if it is uh, greater than that, then the device will be on. Isn't it? Now, here you have 1 volt, uh, 1.5 volt here at the gate terminal. And uh, here, when this voltage drops below 1 volt, then the device will remain into the, uh, then the device will be on. Right? So now, now let's, let's say that this uh, is 0 0.98, 0 0.98 volt. V 0 0.98 volt. So what is the difference now? 0 0.98 here 1.5. So even 0.52. Right. That means it is just greater than your threshold voltage. So what that is how much? 0 0.02 only. So you have some non-zero current. Very small overdrive, but you have some non-zero current. Now because of this non-zero current, now your VD will be somewhat less than VDT. It is no longer equal to VDT because some drop will be there. However, small it may, but some drop will be there. Yeah, Which one? VDD. Yeah, VDD is a high speed. VDD is a VDD. Okay. So, uh, so initially it was 3 volt, somewhat less than 3 volt, say, say 2.95 volt, for example. Okay. What about this voltage? Get minus threshold. Get minus threshold is now it's 1 volt. It's 2.95, 1 volt. 2.95 is larger. So, therefore, the device will remain in the saturation. So, saturation. Not, not always in saturation. Maybe it will be in the saturation. Then what happens? Then comes, now we, now we understand that if you just consider this expression, V out is equal to VDD minus half mu and C out double over L, VB minus V minus VT whole square times RT. So, as V in increases, as V in increases, <laughs> the device will be off, yeah, okay. and as V decreases from V minus VTH, yeah, okay. then what will be the status? Yeah, okay. If V reduces, 
What is that? dB minus Vt is minus V. As V reduces, I will increase. You have more drop across IDRT. That means your V out will reduce, the drain voltage will reduce. So, what do you find? Forget about the source potential. Because the condition is that the drain voltage should be greater than the gate minus threshold. That is the condition for the device to be remaining, uh, to remain in the saturation. What about the source potential? So drain has to be greater than gate minus threshold. So what do you find? Gate is held at a constant value. That is, uh, say, VB. Threshold is also constant. Come along the river, positive. Okay. So this overdrive is fixed. Gate minus threshold in, in that in that sense. Overdrive gate minus threshold, not gate source minus threshold, but gate gate minus threshold. But as you reduce the V in value, you have what you are doing. As you are reducing the V in, you have more gate source because gate is held at fixed voltage. Source is reduced, source potential is reduced. So you have more gate source difference. You have more current, more current through RT, more drop. So lower potential at the drain terminal. Okay? So as V in drops, V out also drops, right? Now forget about V. Now V in drops means V out also drops. So a point will come when this condition is violated. This Vt is no longer equal to, is no longer greater than Vg minus Vt. It is becoming less than Vg. That indicates the beginning of the triadism. Right? Now suppose this happens at some for, uh, some particular value of this V. Then what happens? Your get to source minus threshold voltage is exactly equal to the drain to source voltage. Or in other words, I can say that get minus threshold is equal to the drain. That means at the Age of saturation, what you have at the age of saturation, you have this drain potential, which is also equal to your output potential V out, that is equal to gate minus threshold. Okay, so what is your V out? V out, you know, what is the expression for V out? V out is nothing but VDD minus half mu n. C ox W over L, then VB minus V in minus VTH whole square RT that is equal to VB minus VTH. Now from that you can find out that if, if other values are given like V and C ox W over L RT, VTH, VTH VB, all of them are given VDD. Then from this expression, you can find out the value of V in at which the device enters into the triad. Right? But our objective is to operate the device within the saturation region. And you must be knowing what is the expression for the saturation region. I mean the expression for your output. This output expression V out is equal to VDD minus half mu n c ox w over l then you have the gate source voltage vb minus v in minus vth whole square times rt now this is the governing expression for the device to be in the saturation region v out is equal to vdd minus half mu n c ox w over l vb minus v minus v in minus vth whole square times rt Right? And I am allowing the input to vary from Vb minus Vth towards 0. And from this equation, from this equation only, suppose this is your equation number 1 and this is your equation number 2. So from equation number 1, you can identify the corresponding value of V in for which the device enters into the terminal. And the starting value is nothing but Vb minus Vth for the uh, V in, at which the device enters into the saturation or at which the device becomes on. So that is the range.
So it is that means you have to operate the equation. Okay. So given equation number two, V out is equal to V D minus half mu n C O W over L into this one square R T. So from that, uh, can you find out the expression for the gain? Yes or no? From this analysis, equation number two, without uh, drawing any small single model, is it possible? Yes, so del V out by del V in. So let's differentiate this del V out by del V in. What is that? Where it is constant, you have okay minus half mu n C ox W over L. Okay, then what? V B minus V in minus V T H. Right? Let it be R T. What else? Only minus one. Something will be there inside the bracket. Only minus one. Now you are differentiating this this entire thing V B minus V in minus V T with respect to V. Yeah. Huh. Some two will be there. Now, if I differentiate this entire thing, v b minus v in minus v t h, this entire thing with respect to v in, right? What should be the derivative? Minus one. Is it only minus one? Okay, let it be minus one. V b is constant. Yes, now we have to in, in, incorporate the body effect. Why? Because as you are changing the input voltage, so input is applied the source. Right? Input is applied the source. Okay? And your body is uh, held at some zero voltage. So if you consider this uh, source to body, that defines VSB. So this VSB is non zero now. Okay? So that's why you have minus. Del V T H by Del V in. So what is V in here? V in is basically the voltage at the source. Okay. So what is your Del V T H by Del V in? Body is held at zero. V B, the body potential. I should write capital V or body. V body is equal to zero. So del V T H by del V is nothing but del V T H by del V S B, source to body. Del V T H by del V in is nothing but del V T H by del V S B. They are same because V in is equal to V S B. The expression was eta, del V T H by del V S B. So, what we have? So, del V is nothing but your voltage gain A V. Then it becomes if you take minus, then mu n C ox W over L. This entire thing mu n C ox W over L V B minus V in minus V T H times R D times one plus eta. Okay, can you identify this one? Mu n C ox W over L V B minus V in minus V T H. What is that? G N. So then, the expression for your voltage gain becomes A V is equal to G N into one plus eta times R D. G M into one plus eta times R D. That is the expression for a voltage. That means because of the incorporation of this body effect, the voltage gain is increased to some extent. From GMRT to GM into one plus eta times R. You can also do the same thing by incorporating voltage dependent and current source in the small signal model. Last day in our analysis, we have just neglected that uh, GMB VBS part in the small signal model. We have only incorporated this GMPTS part. If you incorporate standard modulation, uh, your uh, body effect, then obviously this GMPTS, this voltage dependent current source, should be there in parallel with GMPTS. And then ultimately, if you solve this particular 
small signal model, then also you will arrive at the same expression of voltage gain. That is, F is equal to GM into 1 plus eta times 1. Okay? Fine. So, under this condition, what will be the input resistance? Last time, can we remember the input resistance? 1 by GM only. This time, let me, let me once again draw the small signal model. Or rather, first uh, the circuit diagram itself. So, you have some P. Okay, and you are taking the output from this terminal, V out. Last we have seen that the corresponding uh, expression for your uh, input resistance was 1 upon GM. Okay? Compared to the channel, uh, your uh, body effect, then what will be the uh, modified uh, input resistance? Let's draw the small signal model first. Okay, so you have three terminals get, source, drain, okay? Get to source, this voltage, let it be V1, drain to source, you have GM V1. Remember, source is not connected to AC ground. So, therefore, you should have another voltage, uh, another voltage dependent current source between drain to source. What is that? GMV VBS. This is GM VGS and the second one is GMV VBS. Okay? Right? If I incorporate the body effect, apart from GM VGS, you should have another uh, voltage dependent current for GMV VBS which I already discussed in the previous lectures that you should have two voltage dependent current source. One is GM VGS between drain to source and the other one is GMP VBS because that time your drain current is also a function of the source to body potential. Right. So, GM VGS and GMP VBS. Identify the uh, input terminal. What is the input terminal? Source is the input terminal. Right. Gate should be connected to AC ground. Okay? Right? Okay, then what else? Huh? RD, okay. Let there be RD sum. Uh, RD present over here from drain to AC ground. What is the input terminal? Source. Right? Source is the input terminal. So, uh, let's connect some test voltage. Measure the current IEX. So, VBS is the key on it. What is the VBS? I am coming to that. What is VBS? What is the body potential? What is the body potential? Zero. zero. So, VB is equal to zero? VB is equal to zero. What is VS? Source potential? How much? Vx. What is the relation between V1 and Vx? So, V1 is equal to minus Vx. What is VBS then? Minus Vs. Okay. So basically, you have GMV1 directing downwards. That means it's nothing but GM Vx. Right? Similarly, GMV Vs pointing downwards, equivalent to having GMV Vx. 
pointing upwards. Okay? Last time you don't have this part, GMB, VX part that was absent. If I just forget out the body effect, okay? So now let's assume that, okay, uh, this entire thing is inside this box. So the current that is entering is IX. The current that is leaving is also IX. Right? So this IX is having two components. One is GMVX, second one is GMVVX. So I can write IX is equal to GMVX plus GMV Vx. So Ix upon Vx is Gm plus Gmv. So which implies the input resistance is given by 1 by Gm plus Gmv. Last time Gmv was absent, so that's it was simply 1 upon Gmv. So if you incorporate the body effect, your input resistance is even low. Sometimes it's beneficial. We want to have, suppose uh, for a common source kind of thing, what you have seen, the input resistance is infinite, output resistance is moderate. R B or R not, R D R not, R one R one parallel R two. Moderate, no. For common source stage, it's common gate. For common source stage, you have seen that input we are applying the input at the gate. So what was the input resistance that was infinite? What was the output resistance? Moderate. Sometimes R D, sometimes R D parallel, R not, R one parallel, R two. And you can also increase the input resistance to some extent by incorporating the source is generation. If you can do one, one plus G M R O times R S plus R O. Right. Now here, uh, sub, sub, suppose sometimes I would like to have a particular type of amplifier for which input resistance is very small and output resistance is very large. So you have to connect as a buffer. Transfer resistance. One side you have very low input resistance, other side you have very high input, uh, output resistance. You have to design some amplifier which can provide you some gain, but the most important is to connect it properly so that this impedance matching takes place. One upon GM, I would like to make it even smaller. One upon GM plus GM. Okay? And for this case, uh, for uh, this uh, common gate amplifier, you have seen that the output resistance is typically uh, the output resistance of a common source field. Typically, there is no such change. Now, I can incorporate this one as well. Suppose I would like to increase the output resistance of a common gate stage. How can I do that? How can I do that? You have seen that using a common source stage, degeneration, right? Degeneration, and let's take another. Now, now this degeneration is being done by another common source stage. Okay, then it becomes a common source, common gate, cascade or cascode. Okay, how does it look like? Let me have the design first. This is the first stage of amplification. M1. And the load is nothing but the another stage, the common gate. But to apply the input at, at source. And suppose we have a simple resistance over there, RD. And suppose this voltage is held at some PB. And let's call this voltage as Vx. This is your final voltage now. V out. And let's call this is second MOS, M2. So first MOS, M1 is there in a common source fashion. Second was output is out of the drain. And this output is connected to the input of a second stage, which is acting like a common gate stage. And the final output is obtained from the drain of the second MOS. 
okay so this is your common source stage this is a common source ca stage this is a common gate cg stage both of them are used as an amplifier that means what both of these two both of these two mos devices they must operate in the saturation region that we have mentioned right both of these two devices m1 and m2 both of them must be there in the saturation region right so what is the condition for that what is the condition for m1 to be in the saturation the condition for m1 to be in saturation the condition is vx should be greater than or equal to v in minus vth1 Any, any doubt? Drain voltage should be greater than the gate voltage minus the threshold voltage. Source is at ground. On M1, source is at ground. So Vx, the drain voltage should be greater than the V in minus uh, the threshold voltage. Vx minus Vth. Drain should be greater than the gate by one threshold. Ah, plus or no? Vx minus Vx. Drain is greater than the gate minus threshold. Oh, right. That is the condition. Vds is greater than Vgs minus Vth. That is the condition, no? Just short. Vd minus Vg should be greater than Vth. Same thing, no? What is the condition? Condition is that, try to remember, Vds should be greater than Vgs minus Vth. That is the condition. Let's assume that it is true. Let's assume. Let's assume. How to get Vx? How Vx is related to Vb? Vx and how are they related? Vx and Vb? Vb minus Vx is equal to Vgs2. Vb minus Vx. Vgs2. So, what is Vx then? So, Vx is equal to Vb minus Vx. Okay? Right? What I can write over there? Vb minus Vgs2 should be greater than or equal to V in minus Vth1. Okay? Hmm. If Vx is less than V minus Vth1, the device will be in the uh, will enter into the drive. That is a condition for the device to be in the saturation. Ah, I am coming to that. Then for the MOS M2 to remain in the saturation, what is the condition? So that is the condition. Saturation for M1, right? Saturation for M1? Okay. Then for M2, what is the condition? For M2 to remain in saturation, V out should be greater than or equal to Vb minus, not Vx, Vb minus Vt is 2. Drain should be greater than gate minus threshold. Okay. Okay, what is uh, Vb then? So, okay, so uh, from here, what I can get, from here, what I can get, Vb 
should be greater than or equal to v in minus vth1 plus vgs2 okay this is the condition for which m1 remains in saturation vb should be greater than v in minus vth1 plus vgs2 Might be different. Yes, I am coming to that. One of them are they are experiencing some body effect also. Okay. Okay, so V out is greater than V minus V T H two. So that is the condition for one to remain in saturation. M one in saturation. M one in saturation. V B should be greater than that value. And if I just consider the limiting case, so what is the limiting value? Vb is equal to V in minus Vth1 plus Vgs2. Under this limiting condition, then V out should be greater than or equal to V in minus Vth1 plus Vgs2 minus Vth2. What should be greater than this value? So that both of them, both of these two MOS devices, M1 and M2, they are in saturation. Now suppose if I have only one such, only one uh, stage, common source only. The VGS2 terms would be There is reason for that. Okay, let me let me do another thing. Let me make it even more complicated. The condition is, yes. I am not eliminating VGS2. Rather, I would like to incorporate another VGS. V out is greater than equal to VGS one minus VTH one plus VGS two minus VTH two. Does it carry any meaning? Can I write like this? V is equal to VGS one. I am not in the mood to eliminate VGS two. Rather, I am in the mood to incorporate another VGS. That makes sense. Right? Is it okay? Why? Why I am writing in that particular fashion? Suppose you have only one MOS, a single common source state. What is the condition for the device to be uh, in the saturation region? The drain voltage or the output voltage should be greater than the gate minus threshold, right? Or gate to source minus threshold. When you connect another MOS on the top of this M1, M2, you have connected another MOS, M2, on the top of M1. Then, for the entire combination M1 and M2 to remain in the saturation, V out should be greater than or equal to the summation of two other drain voltages. If I have only one one such stage M1 in in isolation, then the condition is that this V out should be greater than V in minus V T H or V T S one minus V T S one. If I connect another MOS on the top of that. This time I have the V out should be greater than equal to the summation of two water drain voltages. VGS one minus VTH one one water drain plus VGS two minus VTH another water drain. Is it advantageous? Is, is it advantageous? Yes or no? From from the from the uh, uh, aspect of the design. From that perspective, do you think that it is advantageous? Yes or no? No. Why not? So your limit, your swing is reduced. Uh, limit yes. Last time the limit was only one threshold, no, one uh, overdrive. If I have only single stage, only one overdrive. This time I have two. summation of two overdrive voltages. You know the maximum limit of V out that is v, maximum is VDD. Right? Maximum is VDD. When the device is off, this entire combination is off. There is a maximum value of V out. And I am now increasing also the minimum value, so the available swing is reduced. That's not great, but I am doing this for getting some other advantages. Is that point clear? Clear? Okay. Then we would like to find out the large signal behavior of this common source common gate cascade. Large signal behavior. Okay, it takes some time to digest this concept. 
This is the condition. This is the condition for this M1, M2 combination to remain in the saturation. Right. So, we are getting some limitation over there. The minimum allowable value for Vout is increased from 1 overdrive to the summation of 2 overdrive. Okay. Let me add some page and let me now vary the input signal and accordingly let's observe what about the V of out and V of X. I am allowing the input to vary from 0 to some PDD. Right. Now to the status of two output voltages. One is the output for the common gate state and the final output and Vx is the output of the intermediate state, that is the common source state. Two of them, right. So, side by side, let me just draw the uh, diagram once again. V in, this is grounded, Vdd, Rd, some voltage VB, M1, M2, V out, VB, sorry, VX. Okay. So, what happens to V out or VX or what happens to V out first when your this combination is off. When V in is less than the one threshold, Vth1, for example, V in is less than one threshold, M1 is off. And if M1 is off, obviously the gate source voltage between uh, uh, of M2 should be small, so that the device cannot conduct, because you have the same current flowing through this combination, M1 into combination. So, you got on again? Accordingly, the source voltage will be modified. Source voltage of M2. Right. Now, if it is off, if M1 is off, there is no current. What is Vx then? Uh, what is V out then? Vdd. Now, it will remain or it will be Vdd. This V out will be Vdd. As long as as long as V in is less than Vt1. That's the problem. This is Vdd. Okay. What about the value of Vx then? What about the value of Vx then? Remember that Vb minus Vx. That difference is just less than one threshold, right? So Vb minus Vx, or let's assume that it is exactly equal to threshold. Vb minus Vx is approximately equal to Vth2. Vb minus Vx. Suppose this is equal to Vth. So Vx is exactly or approximately equal to Vb minus Vth2. Okay. So then. This one is Vb minus Vth2. It should be smaller as compared to Vdd. What happens next? What happens next? When, so this happens. So this happens when your input is Vth1. 
what happens next? After when V crosses VTH1, then what happens to V of out, V out or Vx? Device will remain or will enter into the saturation, both of them, right? Accordingly, both V out and Vx will drop. What is the expression for V out? You must be knowing V out is equal to VDT minus some ID RT drop. Right? And since the current increases, as you increase, okay, so therefore the Vx will also reduce. Right? The current increases as you increase in beyond threshold value VTH1. You have more current as you increase in beyond this point. So this M1 will draw more current. Also draw more current. They are in a series path. For M2, the gate voltage is fixed at VB. The source voltage must also drop. Right? So both of them will reduce. Both of them will reduce. Like this. Then a point will come. So both of them are reducing. Both V out as well as V X. Any doubt? Which one? Zero one VTH one and VTH one 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 and if it is uh, greater than threshold, it will conduct current. That cannot happen. Yes, but that difference is almost close to the threshold voltage. It is not exactly equal to threshold. Yes, no, uh, VN is greater than, I mean, if VN is less than a threshold, if VN is less than one threshold, VT is one, then M1 is off. M2 has to be off. So that difference, so get to source of, thresh, of uh, second MOS, that should be less than threshold. It is 2. Right? So VTS2 must be less than equal to less than VTS2. Now that difference is small enough. This get source difference is small enough. When V just crosses the threshold, V just crosses the threshold, then what happens? M1 conducts current, then M2 has to conduct current, the same current. Okay, so therefore the difference between these two currents, I mean, let this current be say I1 and this current say I2. So when V just exceeds the threshold voltage VTH1, it draws some current in the saturation region. Consider the boundary condition. When V in just exceeds or just exactly equal to the threshold voltage or just exceeds threshold by some delta V. Okay, so at that point of time you, have, you understand that M1 is in the saturation region. You have some current. Now that current has to be equated to the current through M2. Also, they are in the saturation. 
when m2 is off fine but when m2 is becoming on it must be on in the saturation region so at the limiting condition what is the gate source voltage difference that is exactly what wants to show no, if I assume that they have to different threshold voltages, threshold 1 and threshold 2. That's why I have written like Vp minus Vth. If you consider that, okay, threshold 1 and threshold 2 are the same, then Vp minus Vth is on, Vth is on, Vth is on, Vth is on. And the That's why I have, I have used two different threshold voltages, threshold 1 and threshold 2. That's why I have used two different thresholds, threshold 1 and threshold 2, not the same threshold. When the device just, uh, I mean, M1 just carries some current in the saturation, let's assume that okay, the two, two thresholds are same, then what is that current? That current is nothing but uh, I1, if I call it, so that current is nothing but half mu n C ox W over L. And this is V in minus Vth whole square. When V is just greater than Vth by one, one uh, say uh, by, by some delta V, then what is that difference then? V in minus Vth, this is nothing but delta V. That means V in is equal to Vth plus delta V. Okay, so half mu and C of W over L delta V square. Right? So the same kind must also flow through M2. So for M2, what is the corresponding current? Half mu n C ox W over L delta V square at the limiting condition. What is delta V, what is delta V there for M2? This is nothing but gate source 2 minus the threshold that is equal to delta V. That means what? Vb minus Vx minus Vth. That is equal to delta V. So from that, what is your Vx value? Just exactly equal to Vb minus Vth minus some delta V. So it takes off from this V minus Vth. 5 minutes more. Let, let me just uh, com, uh, complete the jump up to PDT. What happens beyond this point? What happens beyond this point? There could have been two conditions. Either M1 enters the triode region first or M2 region first. Depending upon the individual values for your RD and this uh, VB, then one situation can happen earlier than the other. So when can we expect that the, because now you find that both of these two drain voltage, V out and Vx, both of them are reducing. Both of them are reducing. The drain potentials are reducing and as the drain potentials are reducing, you understand that the obviously either uh, M2 or M1 will enter into the uh, trial region first. Now if that, that fall is sharper, this one, if that fall is sharper, then obviously M2 will enter into the uh, triad region first. Now typically if, if the value of Vb is small enough, if the value of Vb is small enough, then obviously M1 will enter into the triad region first. And then when both of them are in triad region, then under this condition, the value of Vx and V out, these two values are almost equal to zero. Because in the deep triad region, what is the, uh, the drain source voltage? That is almost equal to zero, close to zero. So when the, under deep triad region, you expect that, in the deep triad region, obviously, you have some fluctuation up to this point, and then say, the deep triad region, is something like that. And our area of interest is from Vth1 to that point when one of the devices enters into the triad. 
You need to find out the output resistance of this cast coil. I would like to uh, conclude this one today, but since the uh, time is not there, so let's move on and let's uh, calculate the output resistance of this uh, common source, common gate cascade. Typically, what happens? What do you expect for a cascade amplifier? Output resistance? Forget about everything, forget about mathematics. What do you expect? What should be the output resistance? In which order? Oh. Low or high or very high? What do you expect? Low. Why low? For a common gate stage, for a common gate stage, what was the typical value of output resistance? Moderate. Output. Moderate. Input is small. Output is moderate. Consider. Body will not be there if you just consider output side. Okay. Now, now if you consider what, what happens to the MOS M1. M2 is there, for which your output resistance is typically say in the order of say RO2, something like that, RO2, okay. Simple RO2, right? Now take a look at this uh, source side, source side of a second MOS. Here the source is regenerated by the common source stage, right? So it regenerated common gate. You can also observe this common source common gate cascade as degenerated common. The source is degenerated there. Right? So typically if you observe the output resistance, I mean the from this side from M2 only, then this is nothing but a simple common source stage. Common source stage with degeneration. You should expect the output resistance typically large. Hmm, RD is there. No, this entire thing parallel with it. I am just considering this complex. Forget about RT. RT is not the part of the this uh, common source common gate cascade. It is connected externally. I am just considering what is the output resistance of this entire thing. This one. This time you have basically two more. And this MOS. And whenever you are connecting or whenever you are calculating the corresponding output resistance, it doesn't matter where you have applied the input. The input side would be simply connected to ground, AC ground.